You're listening to Pro Community, a Socius podcast, the show where online community meets business performance. Welcome to episode number 12 of Pro Community. I'm Josh Paul. With all of the information out there about online communities and social media, this is the show where online community meets business performance. You can see all of the past episodes of Pro Community at Socius.com, where you can also subscribe to the show in an audio podcast format on iTunes. I'm very pleased to have with me today Barton Goldenberg founder and president of ISM, one of the pioneering firms in the area of customer relationship management. And along with being an entrepreneur, Barton is a popular author and speaker on the current trends and the future of integrating sales, marketing, customer service, and social media. Uh, he's the author of several books on customer-driven strategies, including uh, a new book called Social CRM that will be out later this year. Welcome, Barton. Thank you. I appreciate it, John. It's nice to be with you. Thanks for being on the show. One of the reasons that I'm so excited to have you on the show today is that as I talk with companies and as I write about online customer communities, one of the concepts that resonates the most with executives is uh, the idea of customer relationships, strengthening customer relationships, maintaining customer relationships, and finding new dimensions to customer relationships. And, and the way I want to kick off this conversation is, is really uh, hear from you and, and your 27 years of experience. Um, how did we get to where we are today in with the concept and the practice of customer relationship management where many companies are have a online community at the center of their CRM strategy? Yeah, so it's a historical path that we've been on. CRM started as Salesforce Automation back in the 1980s, and then we added the whole customer care component to CRM in the late 80s. In the early to mid-90s, we added the marketing automation component. In the late 1990s, we added the, the um, whole e-commerce or the e-initiative to CRM. In the 2000s, we intelligence to the suite and all of this is a to me a natural progression to what happened in the last five or so years in the area of social CRM which really was a natural effort to now take the profile of a customer in terms of what we've done with them from a selling perspective or from a customer servicing perspective or from a marketing automation or e-commerce perspective and what we know about that customer all of that was terribly important. That was a huge growth over you know, 85 to 2005, 20 years. But what was missing from that profile was the emotional or sentimental side of how that customer enjoys doing business with us, thinks of us as a partner. And so what, what happened is when the whole digital era began to blossom with both private and public communities, it was a natural progression to say, okay, Let's harvest or scrape relevant information from what those same customers say about us in private and public communities. Let's bring that emotional or sentimental side into our current profile of sales, marketing, customer service, and, and, and business intelligence, and let's marry the two sides. So now we have all of the transactional, somewhat static information from our CRM system Let's bring in the dynamic or emotional and sentimental side from our social community. Let's marry the two inside the customer profile that sits in our CRM system. And now when we approach a customer, or for that matter, a customer approaches us in our two-way dialogue, it's a whole lot more dynamic because we've married the transactional static with the emotional sentimental dynamic. And we just have a better way of selling, servicing, and marketing customers because we're in the know. 
So it's not necessarily that the, the fundamentals of CRM have changed. It, it's really that uh, the concept and the practice have evolved to include more data just because the, the technology is caught up and customer behavior has caught up uh, in a way that, that lets companies do more with that data. Yeah, Josh, I, I would agree. Um, so a couple of point, data points. CRM remains the core of any successful customer relationship management effort. Customer experience, customer touch point, you know, moments of truth. All of that is housed within good customer relationship management. What the social side has done is, uh, it is first of all, you can't have social CRM without CRM. So if you don't have a profile of a customer and know a whole lot about them, adding the social component, nice to know, doesn't really, in my opinion anyhow, doesn't add a whole lot of uh, usable value because because one day I might like you and one day I might not like you, but if I marry liking and disliking with your actual transactional history, I got a pretty good understanding of you know when I should be approaching you, when I should not be approaching you. So s the social side is nothing more than an, a, a new channel, a new opportunity to engage with a customer, potentially through a social channel of their choice, but again, it lays on top of, it sits on top of an effective CRM system. That's why I define social CRM as bringing the social content of the, the social side of a relationship into your existing customer relationship management efforts. It's not, you can't do it alone, you can't, it's not something magically new, it's a logical progression of bringing in that social side of the customer into your CRM efforts. Now, where is the, the social CRM industry right now? It was, a, it was very hot a couple of years ago. I'm hearing less and less about it, um, but the, I know the companies that ha are putting it into practice are very successful. Yeah, so this is a, a good and tough question. So let's talk players and let's and then let's talk where the industry is at. Because social communities are hot, everybody feels that it's important when you are dealing with a customer to have either public information their LinkedIn or their Facebook or whatever handles and, and address are appropriate. They think that's important. Those that have private social media communities built on the lithiums or jives or mazingas also feel that it's very important to have insight as to what the customer or prospect might have said in the private community. So nobody denies the fact that, you know, the social is the channel of choice for marketing and where people are reaching customers. So the question became, let's say three or four years ago, maybe five years ago now, how do we integrate that social insight into our CRM system? So here we go. The CRM player said, oh my oh my, we better take our existing CRM system, go out to the social communities, public for the most part, somewhat private for those that did it, and figure out how to harvest information into our CRM system. So that meant they now had place for, you know, Facebook or LinkedIn or various uh, handles that the customer might have. Maybe a little bit useful, not terribly useful. It wasn't necessarily being filtered as it needed to be, but it was the beginning. And at the same time, social media platform players, for example, Lithium, I remember it distinctly, went to CRM Evolution in New York from CRM Magazine and said, hey, we're a CRM player, when in fact they were really a platform for social listening and setting up private communities, really not customer relationship management, but they wanted to kind of move into the CRM space where they could create a profile inside this social platform, whereby again we could now integrate the social side with the CRM side. So we got a mishmash of players, CRM players wanting to go out to social, Salesforce did it, Pivotal did it, SAP did it, lots of companies are doing it now, the, the, the CRM, traditional CRM players. So they have ways of going out to various, again, but for the most part, sometimes private social communities and harvesting or scraping relevant information and bringing it in. Infor kind of broke the grounds a little bit further in the last few years from a CRM vendor where they really have an, a customer engagement model. And and what, what it worked, how that works is they say, okay, um, Let's listen to private and public communities. Let's filter, so using the listening tools, Radiant 6 and others, let's filter the information based on what we want to know and hear. Let's bring it down into the CRM profile and enhance the profile for both transactional information that currently exists in CRM and now enhance it for the social insights that we gather by listening to public and private communities. 
let's then analyze the overall what we're hearing from our customers in our CRM system. That's the business intelligence. Let's segment and or give unique messaging back out to our customers in the channel of choice, and that might include a, you know, a, a social channel. So Infor has made a big leap. I've worked with them and others on this area. And then there are customers that have made a big leap. So, so one of our customers is Marriott Corporation. They're looking very carefully at how do we leverage the social insight that customers say about Marriott on, again, public and private communities so that we're you know, more attuned to be ready to address issues as they come in through the web or through the contact center or direct to the hotels and so forth. So, so we have the CRM players wanting desperately to go out and gather information from the social communities, gather social insight. We have the community, the, um, the sort of platforms that create the communities, you know, the Jives, the Lithiums, the Mazingas trying to go in and claim themselves to be CRM players. So you know, neither party is doing it brilliantly. As I often refer to, this is a new ball game, and we're in the early innings of that ball game, which is why there was a lot of evangelistic hype two, three years ago, which you alluded to, Josh. It quieted down because now companies are actually doing it. Or, you know, the CRM vendors are realizing, can we do it? The platform vendors are asking, you know, can we do it? And then people like myself are working with some of the world's best companies to do it. Um, and sometimes it's just not always clean. So, for example, one large, one of the largest global manufacturers worldwide has said, listen, we have members of our community that are very actively involved talking to one another about this particular product, its applications, and how it should be applied. And this is a, a, an industry um, um, oil and lubrication client of ours, one of the world's largest. And so they, they have lubrication engineers talking to one another on the particular community. And now the question is, you know, how do we harvest that information and bring it into their existing CRM system so that sales reps and or distributors around the world are actively using what I call social insight? Well, the listening tools exist to listen to what people say. You know, I think the figure is less than half of the people that are actually engaging social listening tools are spending more than $100 a month. So they're not listening well, but there are some that do listen well. So we have listening tools, but not everybody's listening effectively. We have filtering tools that allow us to say, I only want to filter on these keywords or this pattern. Again, they're reasonable, not outstanding. The example I always give is my my commute in my Toyota stinks. Well, is it my commute that stinks or is it that the Toyota stinks because they're close by? So, you know, the whole filtering is less than optimal, but, but getting better. The ability to take that social insight that's been listened to and filtered, drive it down into the CRM system through APIs or other such tools, again, in an immature state, but getting better. And then the ability to analyze once it's in the CRM system to do good you know, business intelligence and market segmentation and come out with unique messaging to engage customers it, it is is a work in progress. So so the, the industry is now beginning to settle down. We work with you know many, many very well known companies, not in philosophically talking about this, not in evangelizing it, by golly making this happen. So we've built just as an example, we've built multiple communities for AAA, the American Automobile Association and their counterpart north of the border. The Canadian Automobile Association, this is actually happening today. The sites are up and running. They're three, four years into it. They're harvesting information. It's being fed into their various CRM systems. It's being used when the AAA member calls a branch of the call center or is on the web. So I, I, I'm of the belief, Josh, that the evangelistic period is over. It was, as always, overhyped, underdelivered, but not as bad as CRM was in the 2000s. And now what we're doing is we're settling down. The CRM vendors are, are in the saddle trying to become more socially integrated. The social platform vendors uh, are, are, are trying to become more CRM sensitive. And then the ISMs of this world, my companies and others, are saying, let's just make this happen because it speaks a whole lot louder when you can talk about examples with returns than talk about the art of the possible. And I think that's a good good deep dive into kind of where social communities are intersecting with customer relationship management strategies. Um, I mean, going back to, to the hype, I think social CRM is, is going to continue to be under the radar for this reason. The Social media is one of the most widely written about 
uh, areas on the web, mainly because the, the barrier to adoption of public social networks is so low. And when you start you know, putting the rubber to the road and talking about actual business results and CRM strategies, the people who have experience in that area uh, and access to experiment in that, in that area become a lot fewer. And, and even though companies are going to be making it work and companies are going to be driving the return on investment, uh, you're not going to hear about, you're going to continue to not hear about it on the top 50 marketing blogs. Um, and now, one of the things that you talk about you know, extensively is that you know, this isn't um, you know, getting away from the hype and really focusing on making money and ROI. This, this isn't just for fun. This isn't just for hype. This isn't to build a name for yourself or anybody else. How can a company go from, I've heard about this, maybe we'll try it, to we're going to make this a central part of our customer relationship strategy? So good question. So you're right. We are obsessed with starting out with metrics as to what we're expecting from the community. And I think not to sound unnecessarily strong, it's absolute hogwash that somebody would venture into the social or media or social CRM space without a very clear set of metrics well in mind long before they ventured in. I've heard my distinguished colleagues, analysts, friends say, hey, listen, Bart, you put your toe in for six months, you see how it goes, and then you look at metrics. I, I'm completely against that. You set your metrics from the moment you're perceived to want to be in this space. And here's why. You know, the whole social space, you can spend a boatload of money, a boatload of time without seeing results. You can also spend a boatload of time and a boatload of money with seeing some very impressive results. So you have to have a very clear understanding of why in the dickens am I getting involved in this social thing. You have to understand, you know, what are you asking for in return, and then you're going to create an engagement plan these private or public that allows you to realize that return and to me that's the only way to do this and that's the only way we do it with every single one of our customers by the way that's true for the CRM side as well as the social CRM side so let me, let me give an example AAA said or the American Automobile said we, we have a you know I think it's a public figures but in excess of 50 million members in America the largest private um, um, member based uh, um, company in the, in, in the world and they said, listen, we know a whole lot about, you know, how many times we tow their cars or what travel, where they bought from us in the stores or what vacation trips they've taken or what insurance their products buy from us or what financial services they buy. We have a lot of that, and, and it sells in a variety of different ways inside their CRM systems. But how do people feel about us, and could we generate more loyalty? Could we generate additional customers if we had, for example, a community that said, this is the cruise community, and every time somebody used AAA to go to a cruise in Alaska, came back, was encouraged to participate in this community, talk about their experiences, we put subject matter experts or forums up. Would that help drive more people to the community, and would that help drive you know, interest by both existing members that have gone on a cruise, take a second cruise, and would that help new, newcomers to AAA or newcomers to cruising think, oh, well, I guess if they did it, we could do it. So. The key point on this was there was a direct linkage from the outset as to why this community was was created. And the goal was pretty straightforward. The, the, the goal of AAA was to take the existing member base and sell additional products to them. So they talk about a member product index, MPI, and if we have one service with you, you're a member, then use it for towing, that's good, but we know that your renewal rate is going to be lower then if we have two products with you, towing plus vacations, and we know it'll be higher renewal, but it would even be higher if we got a third product, life insurance or car insurance, or we got a fourth product, financial information, we got a fifth product, travel services. So the objective of AAA from a business perspective was let's drive up the MPI, the member product index, and have you as a member use more products. Well, uh, how do we know, uh, how do we do that? And what we do is we know which customers are currently using which products, and we may reach out to customers, let's say, that aren't using cruises or travel service, that show a profile that looks like they're a type of travel customer, we'll invite them to a travel forum, so or, or a cruise forum, or a cruise discussion, or a subject matter expert 
blog or whatever's appropriate in that particular case. So AAA from the outset said, we have an understanding of what our members purchase right now. We know that we know a lot about our members in terms of what they do and don't like, what they've said they want and don't want. We do third-party overlays and better understanding our customers. So we have an understanding of, you know, we have technographic profiles of our members, but we'd like to join communities. We put all that knowledge together and said, okay, we're going to create a community that is going to allow us to invite potential or existing members, even potential prospect members, to our community because the objective now is to drive up the MPI, the member product index. And, and there was a specific number that was used to drive up the MPI. So we defined clear success metrics from the outset of this initiative, and we linked it directly to the AAA business goal of driving up the MPI within the, you know, in the, in the member base. Very importantly, Josh, we then linked the entire social CRM, in their case it was both private and public communities, to their CRM system. So right from the outset after we had you know, directly linked the community to the business goal, right after we had defined success from the outset using clear metrics, we then tightly integrated that social effort into their CRM. What do I mean? We began to figure out how do we take the information, the social insight, as I call it, coming from the communities, bring that down into our CRM profile about the member, such that the next time the member called, we could say, oh, hello, Ms. Smith. Um, thank you very much for being a AAA member for this number of years and using these services. Um, we, we, we saw you on the community, and you were very excited about the whole upcoming cruise. I thought we'd like to talk to you about a, an upgrade on your birth or a new availability. And, and so they began to, you know, think about how do we, right from the outset, how do we closely integrate the whole social side into our CRM efforts? And, and different clubs within AAA, you, you know, are more successful at doing this than others, but it's, it's top of mind if you want to call that. We also integrated those communities into other marketing programs. So, again, the social is one channel um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a marketing toolkit, if you want to call it that. So we closely integrated social such that it was seamlessly integrated with outbound emails, uh, with outbound um, direct mail campaigns, with on the website uh, you know, promotions. It was all closely integrated because social is but one channel. So while we're promoting channels, let's promote social. And, and we also found out that um, certain customers preferred to use social channels as their channel of choice. So we made sure we, you know, focus that effort down the social channel of their preference. We drew upon existing organizational resources that was in tune with this whole social side. So we didn't take, you know, we took the young kids that love to do social and actively involved in the project. We use them as subject matter experts. They badge themselves accordingly as a part of AAA, as a part of the community. But they got discussion going. They got the threads moving. They got, you know, they helped the community be successful. We also reached out and leveraged AAA partners. So AAA has the show your card and save mode where some of you know, uh, there's, you know, I don't know how many, but, but dozens and dozens of partners, whether it's Hertz or, or, or others that that they have relationship with. And we said, hey, listen, we're creating communities. Would you like to participate? They brought in their members and various you know, uh, successes on that partner relationship, but we extended to that to help promote cross-partner member you know, relationships. And then, as you would expect, Josh, we, you know, we, we made the community successful. So we, we actually set up these communities. One of the things we do, we, we design and, and CRM strategies social CM strategies, and social media communities. So in the case of AAA, years ago we worked with them and still do on designing and implementing CRM strategy. Now many of the clubs are ready for the social CRM and the social media component. So in that particular case, we monitored one of the AAA club's communities for several years. In one case, we're still doing that. And what we did is we were very careful to monitor the community you know, multiple times, make sure that the threads were clean, that there was a quick response time, that that there was a, an engagement, that we responded quickly to community input, that we broke up threads and discussions as appropriate, that we had a calendar of subject matter experts that were coming on the system, that we chose things they were passionate about, automobiles and travel. And then we were very careful to use what we call an integrated social media strategy, whereby we would take the public 
Facebook AAA sites entice people to come down to the private community and get them more integrated, you know, in intimately involved with AAA because we felt that was a better way rather than having on a big open forum. So, so to answer your question, it's all done with a very clear picture from the outset as to why are we doing this. That's the linkage to business strategy, setting clear success metrics from the outset. What are we expecting? Then making sure that we link that, if you will, to existing CRM programs. That's the integration of social insight into the CRM profile. We acknowledge social as but one of the marketing channels. There, we integrate it with other marketing channels across fertilization. We draw upon existing resources, particularly those that enjoy the whole social space to help monitor and or badge them as employees actively involved in the community. In the case of AAA, we leverage partners where it was appropriate, third-party partners. And then we played that all-important role after we got the community designed and up and running. We then played the critical role of monitoring it carefully, responding to the output or input you know, very regularly, and then making sure that they were picking areas that they were passionate about, in their case, cars, travel, and a few other areas. And then we used that integrated social media strategy where we took public interest, brought it into a public social media interest on Facebook and elsewhere, brought it down to the private community and opened up the more into intimate conversation with either existing members and or potential. I, I hope, Josh, that kind of gets to you. It, it does. And, and there's a lot of points there that, that align with exactly the way that we at, at Socius write about and talk about and, and help our customers um, utilize social channels, both private and public. I mean, one of, one of the big misconceptions is, you know, why can't I just do this on Facebook? And, and we, we really talk to them about how public social networks have a role, but when, you, when you're building value for your customers and, and your community is an extension, your, your private community is an extension of your product offering with, you know, supercharged with, with uh, business intelligence, that the public social media really just becomes a channel. You're utilizing that reach to drive people back to your uh, private community. The other thing I, I talk about is you know, online communities, uh, online customer communities uh, bring customers, employees, and partners. I'm glad you brought up partners. They bring them all together for the success of the customer and the, you know, the satisfaction of, of the customer and in turn the, the success of the company. Uh, Gosh, let me just comment on something you said, and I, I think it's a couple of things are very important. Yeah. So public versus private communities. I'm still quite astonished how few know about private communities, but that's more and more annoying. But most people think, oh, well, I'll just put up a Facebook page and I'll be, you know, have my social community. There's some, you know, we understand why people do that. When you have 900 million people that are on Facebook, you think, well, I'll, I'll probably reach who I need. But, but the bottom line is that there's a couple of things. First of all, you don't own the data on Facebook. I mean, that, that's, that's their data. And if they change the rules, you're not in control of policy in public site. If they change the rules on the data or what you can and can't do, you know, you're at the mercy of what's going on at Facebook. And that has happened multiple times. But, but, but very important, you know, the concept of intimacy in a community is, very, is also very important. And, and, and when there's you know, 900 million potential people listening, including every single one of your competitors, you know, you're going to lose a certain amount of, of honesty, integrity, seriousness, it, it, it just takes on a different meaning. So, and, and there's one other thing about those public communities. Rarely are they a destination to drive somebody to buy something. Increasingly that's happening, but it's, it's really not a destination site. So I alluded to something that we created, I'm going to say 2005 or something like that. We call it the integrated um, social CRM um, strategy. And, and what it does is it, it uses what we call a hub and spoke system. So the hub is your website on which the social, your private social community sits, or you know, from your website you outbound to a in the cloud community, but it's 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 your website and the community are linked. And what you're doing in that's the hub. The spokes are you know the Facebooks, the LinkedIn, and various other communities that are relevant to your particular topic. And what you're doing in the hub and spoke model is you're using Facebook and Twitter to drive traffic from the public communities to your website to your particular community. And then once they're on your community, you can have much more intimate discussions, subject matter experts. Sometimes they're by invitation only, so not every competitor can join and listen in. 
You might have, you know, special sessions for specific types of customers. All of this is building that customer intimacy, which is so important in long-term customer relationship management. When you have those private dialogues, again, within reason, and the industry is not quite figured this out, but you are going to harvest relevant information, you know, with member permission, without member permission, you have to figure that out. Each company does it differently. Bring it into the CRM. And now we can talk to a customer through the channel of engagement that they want. But what we've done is we've integrated public and private. And so the thinking, at least from our side, is you use Facebook and Twitter and everything to generate interest. But then you use those tools to drive traffic to your private community, to your web site as a destination where they can purchase, complain, etc. Hi, I'm Josh Paul, host of Pro Community and Director of Marketing and Strategy at Socius. Thank you for joining us today for this conversation about the role that private online communities play in customer relationship management. Please join Barton Goldenberg and I for the second half of our conversation on next week's episode of Pro Community. So that you don't miss it, please subscribe to Pro Community at socius.com slash Pro Community or get the audio podcast on iTunes.